Great, it's wonderful to be here and be part of this creative, innovative group. So today I want to talk about TSP Mazes. It's a uh, how to do it yourself talk in terms of, it comes from my new book, Math Bites, which is very much uh, targeted toward getting people engaged in mathematics, which seems quite fitting for G4G. For TSP is basically trying to minimize some aspect of a trip. If you're a parent, it could be that you're trying to minimize the number of times that you're going to be asked, are we there yet? And so you have some locations, you're going to drive around and then come home and go to each location only once. It's a problem of a lot of interest. UPS uses it to save money. And in 1962, Procter & Gamble ran a contest with 33 cities. If you're not familiar with the problem, you can pick 32 cities and quickly see that uh, you would very much want a computer to help you. And then we saw a talk earlier by Craig, and Craig Kaplan, Bob Bosch, and Herman worked on applying this to uh, artistic images, as we see here, the touch in Marilyn Monroe, where the cities are a stippling of a particular underlying image that you have. So in my book, Math Bites, I make a slight adjustment to this so that you can make a maze, and you could do it with a stippling that you make of your own, and then just not have an exact TSP um, solution path through the image that you make. So I'm going to take this image of Bart Simpson. It has 5,000 cities where the cities create the stippling that you see. And then I'm going to adjust that to make a maze of Bart. And so if you think about it, if you, if it, I mean, we have a wide range of people here. If you don't want to think about it, and just take my word for it, is that when you have your cities and you make a loop, so this is like you take a piece of string, you have the string, you tie it at the end so you have a loop, and then you just lay it out, you step back, and you have Bart Simpson. And that's the idea that it's actually lines between points. It doesn't necessarily always look that way on the image, but you have as many lines, which we call edges, between the points, which in this case we called ver vertices. And it's important for the next slide, is that Euler actually told us that V vertices are cities, minus E, which is the route between cities or edges, plus F, F will be regions, which I'll talk about more in a minute, equals two. Well, we know that V equals E from that previous slide, at least for that one picture, but it, it's true in general. And so therefore, the number of faces or regions is two. So that means we have an in and an out. That means that we have an in region and an out region. And if you actually think about it, the in region could be our maze. And that's all that this talk is really about, is that we just apply Euler's characteristic and get that. So I use the fill function in MATLAB. I'm a MATLAB programmer. And then I just see the red, and the red is the in. And so then all I do is look for a region on the in and a re another part of that in region. And I make one of them the place where I enter the maze and another one where I exit the maze. And as a mathematician, I love this because I know that there is a solution path, but I can make things quite complicated and have absolutely no idea what it is. And as a mathematician, existence but not construction is perfectly fine with me. So this, this is my sister. She was the first reader of the draft of my book. And uh, I, this image is in the book to honor her reading because my sister hates math. And I knew that if the draft of the book could pass through her, then I had a book I was willing to continue to work on. And she wrote back, she said, I didn't follow you all the time, but I was always willing to keep reading because I knew I could catch you on the other side. And I should point out that while we're siblings, I, she's also my harshest critic. So for her, that was a huge compliment. But for me, the point is not just to show you that I can do this, but to show you how you could do it. It all can be done with freeware. The stippling can be done with uh, a program. It's called StippleGen. It's on the Evil Mad Scientist uh, webpage. And you just download it, and it creates the stippling for you. Then I actually ask it to create the TSP. The problem with their TSP is that they don't actually have the person returning home. So they actually create the TSP, then you just stop at the last city because it was so charming. So I, I use that only to save the cities in a format that's easy for me. And you open it as a text file. And then I just simply uh, submit it to the NEO server, which is at Argonne National Lab. You know, it's just a free uh, optimization server. And they actually have Concord, which is the program that I was previously using, but I've been struggling to get to install on my Mac. So I just submit it there, and then it comes back with the route. So here's one route that I have. And you know, I have an in and an out. And then this is what creates the maze that will be in your package. And so my gift to you will be that you can go through this labyrinth with Martin Gardner. And I think we all have had wonderful journeys with Martin in his many uh, delightful ways that he engages us and engaged us in math. So I have a few questions for you. I'm not really just interested in showing you what I can do, but seeing how you can help me, and then maybe how I can have an inspirational time with you. 
So I only make the two cuts. I have that in region. I make a cut to get in and a cut to get out. But as we saw in Craig Kaplan's talk, there are many other ways to think about mazes. This is just my first time to think about a maze. Are there other ways to make cuts? Could, would you want to make a cut into that other region that would send you out into there? How many would you want to make? What pictures would you try? Some are easier than others. And so, and what other ideas come to mind? That's the delight of G4G, is that we get to think and create together and take a bite out of math. Thank you.